Welcome to another edition of Performance TV. On today's show, Tommy and Kathy are working with Stage 8 locking fasteners. Also, Kathy's learning how to secure your vehicle with our friend Alan from Auto Secure USA. And Tommy's found Evapo Rust, a product that every garage needs. He'll explain how to get the rust off your engine parts. All of this and an industry update coming right up. Welcome to Performance TV. In the past, we've had a lot of products. They'll cover a lot of different vehicles. As you can see here, we have a wide variety right now. But we've got one product today that's going to benefit them all. It's going to keep them safe and secure. It's from Auto Secure USA. So let's check in with Kathy and get the details. Tommy, it's the best anti-theft unit from Auto Secure USA. And Alan, the last time you joined us, we had Quattro here in the back seat. But uh, is he out, like taking a bone break or something? Yeah, he, he was fighting with me. He wanted lines in this week's episode, but uh, he's out on a break and he'll, he'll be fine outside, so. Well, you know, Tommy mentioned all these different types of vehicles. I mean, we've got a big John Deere tractor in here and, and everything else. The best unit can work in all of these? Yeah, not only all these that we have in the garage, but also boats, RVs, motorcycles, pretty much any vehicle with an engine we can adapt the system to. You know, and I've even heard of some folks using them at like at different sheriff's departments and stuff for, for gun safes. Yeah, we, we have had a couple of uh, things like that, and I, you even requested trying to do it on the toolboxes. I, I think it would be great. You know, you're dealing with not only the toolbox costs a lot, but what's inside actually costs more than the toolbox. Absolutely. Well, how does this work compared to some of the things that are out on the market that may come with your vehicle? You have to pay a service for it to keep them, but they usually don't kick in until, well, after somebody's already stolen it. Well, I mean, most of what you're talking about is what they call theft recovery, and you're right. It happens after your vehicle's stolen. Um, and there are some good systems. However, what we do is we want to keep the vehicle in your garage, in your boat dock, you know, in your driveway. Okay. And the way we do that and what makes it so secure is the biometric portion. In this case, it's your fingerprint. Okay. Okay. What we're going to do is going to hold the right button down. Please aim for fingerprint to return. Now we're in the menu. Okay. It's going to ask me if I want to go into another language. We don't want Chinese. Right. Okay, plus you love it. Same thing. It's that simple. What if you have more than one person in the family? Well, the system will hold up to 30 prints, and, and like we did earlier, we enrolled you in the car. I'm already in the car. I have I have four of my fingers in there. You know, God forbid I have to have a Band-Aid on one finger or do more TV shows like this. But we could show everybody how easy it starts. Just go ahead and show them. What, what about ballet mode, though, too? A lot of, well, you know, somebody going to get in your vehicle, are they going to be able to start it and bring your vehicle back for you? That's a great question. Any authorized user of the system. So if you're enrolled in the system, you can put it into valet mode or secure mode within five seconds. Hmm. This, this particular car has a, a push button start. Can, does it matter? No, it could be a key ignition, it could be a push button start. In the older technology, like the Z28 on the set, we can actually replace the key altogether. Oh. But with the push button technology, we still need the key fob, which I keep in my car at all times, right here in the center console. Oh, okay. So because nobody can take off of the no. vehicle because they don't have your actual live finger, okay? Correct. So all we have to do is go ahead, I'm gonna push in. Is it? And this is gonna talk to me too, correct? It's gonna, it's gonna walk you through the process. Okay, well, let's go ahead and give her a shot here. Fingerprint. Okay, I'm gonna input my fingerprint. And there you have it. Just that simple. Absolutely awesome. And these, it doesn't matter like make or model or, or whatever that we're using. The only cars that we avoid with it are what's called a true hybrid because they don't have an actual starter. Okay. Okay, but if it's an electric car, gas car, diesel car, ve or vehicle, it'll work fine. Install time, is it, it what, what are we tying into? Typical installation takes 45 minutes to an hour, and depending on where you're going to place the sensor, where ergonomically it fits best in the car, or the customer would want that in their particular car, it may take another hour. But this is the, the typical spot that, that you'll find to put into a vehicle? Yes. You did have to do some moving some stuff around here. I did it to personalize it for myself and also to make it easy for demonstration purposes. We've put this everywhere from an ashtray to a little cubby hole where you might have a coin holder. Again, wherever the consumer might want it, 
the installer can go ahead and put it. You're just talking about maybe extending some wires. Well, I tell you what, I know a consumer, you definitely want to check this out, find out more about how you can get the best anti-theft system from Auto Secure USA. Just hop on their website at autosecureusa.com and we'll have more up next here on Performance TV. This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by Precision Turbo, the world's foremost manufacturer of high performance aftermarket turbochargers. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Fortire.com, in other words, we've got what you need. And by ARP the world leader in fastener technology. Performance TV coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. You might have seen some of our past episodes that we featured Evaporust and how well it works at removing rust. Well, I'm with David Harris of Evaporust. And David, we've taken small parts off of the car and we've submerged them in Evaporust and see how well it works at removing the rust. We've even done the car frame in a past episode and how well it worked on it. But what about an engine block? If you're, if you're restoring a car and you find the correct number engine, that's very important to the restoration. Will it work on removing rust from an engine like this one right here? Sure, Tommy. It, evaporust will remove rust from any surface. The, matter, the key is to find the correct application. In this case, we can't really uh, immerse this in something small. You can't really, it's too rusty to use the towel method. So what we're going to do is soak this in something pretty large. And we've gone, we've got this tub from a uh, farm and ranch store. It's about $35. And we've got about 20 gallons of evapor rust in it. Seems like a lot of product, but for de-rusting something that's valuable for your restoration, it's really very inexpensive. What we're going to do is just lower it into it, allow okay. it to soak 24 hours, and then we're going to pull it out and you'll see the difference. Now, will it get in, in the cylinder walls and remove all the rust so you can actually, maybe the pistons are stuck in this and it looks like they probably are. Will, no, you, will you be able to get the pistons out without hurting the cylinder walls? You should, yes, absolutely. Uh, you're just going to have to, sometimes for penetrating stuff like that, it may take two or three days. But obviously we're not in a big hurry for this and it, we've got the time to sit there and let it continually chew that rust out of there and then you can tap it out and go. Right, it's going to go down in the water jackets as well, remove all the rust from inside the block and, and the cylinder walls all, all and the outside. I mean, you think this is the right numbers and you can't really see them on this engine. Right. We're going to be able to see exactly what the numbers are on this engine once the rust is removed. You bet. You all bet. right. Well, all we got to do is submerge this in there, right? That's I'll right. lower it down. All right. And of course, evapor rust is non-toxic, non-corrosive, safe on your skin and eyes so you don't have to worry about Tommy lowering this a little too quickly and me getting covered in the product, but he's not going to do that. Now, how, how does evaporust work? How does it take this rust off? I mean, it works outstanding. It works by a process called selective chelation. It's going to uh, remove the rust by absorbing the iron out of the rust and leave everything else alone. You don't have to worry about aluminum, copper, brass, tin, your hands, anything like that. It's completely safe. All right, we've got to leave this thing in here for 24 hours and we pull it back out. We're going to see how the rust was removed. I can't wait to see this thing. It's going to look great. Tommy, years ago, when I built the garage, made it a three-car garage, thought I was going to have plenty of room. No, it's our, it gets full. Just real quick. Well, there's a simple solution, getting that stuff up off the floor, on the wall, out of your way. It's the Wally Racks. It's a simple design. It'll fit practically anywhere. On um, If you, you got a stud in your garage, I'm sure it's, you got a lot of them open in the garage. Right. Or it's behind the wall, you know where they're at. Garage or your basement or the tool shed. That's right. This is simple and easy to install. You put two screws in it, mount the base to the wall. It comes with some solid oak pegs, so it'll be able to hold up to 50 pounds. You can put your brooms. Uh, anything, anything you can think of will hang on a hook. You see there's different adjustments. You right. need something at an angle, wider, narrower. Right, you want to hang your rack, your broom, you know, your golf bag, whatever you want to hang up on the wall. This is a simple solution. I mean, I wish I would have thought of this. It's pretty simple. I know. Sometimes it's the simplest things that can create a lot of much-needed storage. You want to find out how you can get your Wally racks, which come with two bases, four dowels, and four screws. All you have to do is check out the website at the bottom of your screen. David, we've had this engine in here about 24 hours, and it was nasty looking. I'm excited to see it coming out of here. It was nasty. I think it came off the Titanic. <laughs> uh, you can see on the oil pan already. Look how much nicer that looks. And uh, no. That's just the exterior. We, this thing's been filled with evapor rust in, inside and on the outside. Yeah, it's, uh, 
It's got a lot of grease on it, but... Uh, yeah, the baffle rust is going to remove rust, but what about the grease? What's our next step with this engine? Next step would, if we had done the entire engine, we would take it outside and hit it with a pressure washer, take the grease off of it, and then we could, we could disassemble it. And uh, at that point, any part that needs another dip, we just drop back in for a few minutes and, and we're done. I mean, I want to see this. Look, look at the crankshaft. I, know. I mean, there's bare metal here, rusty steel there where it was dipped in. That's exactly right. And if, it, uh, if it's locked up and frozen, like these pistons are, uh, give it a little bit more time to work and it's going to be, you'll be able to remove these. Yeah, I mean, the cylinder walls, look at that. All the rust has gone out of the cylinder walls where it was at, in the water jackets. This thing's, I mean, you can see it running out. Yeah. It's not only de-rusted on the outside, we're also de-rusting on the inside as well. Yeah, water jackets are gonna be clean. Yeah, and we're gonna knock the pistons out. Now, after we get those out with we'll power wash the block, the pistons and rods, main caps, all that, we can put it back in here and continue to use this? That's right. We're gonna use this over and over and over. It's got a little grease and oil in it, but that's not gonna hurt the evaporator. rust. Still gonna work. It's still gonna work. How typically long would that last? How many times could you use that over and over to? Well, each one of these gallons is gonna do about, every gallon in there is gonna do about 300 pounds of parts. So it's about half a pound of rust per gallon. And that's a very long life. Yeah, now you're gonna take an engine, maybe it's a, an engine that is specific to a restoration you're doing. To get that's gonna be very expensive, but it's very cheap to actually save that engine. That's exactly right. And now we use rust block on it after we're done, spray it off, and this will keep it from rusting from, from now on. That's right, well, for about a year. For about and, a year. And then when you're, if you need to reapply, you can reapply anytime you want to. Mm. It's, uh, it's safe, it's simple, it's easy to use. It's gonna get your engine back in shape where you can get started on rebuilding this engine get it back in that car and have everything original. Man, I mean, an inexpensive way to save an engine that might be worth a lot of money, Evaporust, check them out on the web. This thing does everything. We'll be right back with more Performance TV after this. Whew, that thing looks awesome. Yeah, it did good. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know what? Ugh, not very good performance sounding there. Sounds like we've got an exhaust leak. Well, Tommy, I think he's got somebody that can help us fix that. I'm with Robert from Stage 8 Locking Fasteners. And Robert, we put a set of headers on our Camaro here a few weeks ago, and yeah, wouldn't you know it, already we have an exhaust leak. So how's Stage 8 going to help me fix this problem? Well, we can prevent this exhaust leak from even starting. Is this a daily driver, let me ask you? It's daily driver. It's got some, you know, road miles on it already. And here it is, exhaust leak not very, not very long afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Headers are great for the extra power and all that, but you want to make sure that they don't start counter-rotating and loosening your header bolts after you put them in. So we recommend using Stage 8 locking fasteners as soon as you install a header. Yeah, Today's, right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. Today's header companies are exhaust experts, but they're not experts on fasteners. That's true. I mean, they know the exhaust, but you are the expert at keeping them attached to the car, keeping them tight, and not getting the exhaust leak like we hear on this car. That's exactly right. You know, we can prevent even that first degree of counter-rotation. And only five degrees of counter-rotation cost you 50% of your clamp value. All wow. of a sudden, you're blowing header gaskets, and you're doing what we're doing today. Well, explain to me, how, how does it keep from backing out? How does it lock itself? Sure. We actually, we put a groove in the top of the bolt here, okay? The bolt goes in and it gets torqued to spec. We have a variety of locking retainers. Uh, they're engine specific. So if you have a small block Chevy, we know what retainer goes on there. But the retainer goes over the head of the bolt just like a box end wrench, right up against the tube of the header. And then an E-clip will keep that down. So it cannot counter rotate because it's mechanically locked. Yeah, the bolt can't loosen up because it's up against the header and doesn't allow it to move. That's exactly right. Wow. Now you notice here we have what we call a double hex head. This will make it easy so that you can use a 3 16 ball allen to spin in those hard to reach ones and then of course just torque it from the outside. Yeah, yeah. if you can't get in there with a the wrench, you can do it with the allen, get it in there. Some of them get really tough to get into. Y yeah. You've kind of thought of everything, huh? We have, we have. And we've been doing this now for 30 years. We've sold our 19 millionth kit without a single reported failure. Well, better get busy. we got some work to do. Let's do it. Well, Robert, I took all the old header bolts out, put a new gasket in, cleaned everything up, and started some of the stage eight bolts in here. I got one to go, and then we're ready to put the locking mechanisms on them, correct? Yes, that's right. All right, well, I'm going to put this last one in here in this hole. Now, what I, I like that you have the Allen head in there, and you can, you can put them in, in tight spaces, mm -hmm. but what if you have a tight tube, and maybe you need a stud and a nut? Do you have the same type of device for nuts? Yeah, Tom, we actually do the same thing with a nut. We put a groove around the nut, and it works just like our locking header bolts. So you can put your nut on your studs and lock them just the same way. 
Yeah, either way, you run a stud or a bolt. That's correct. All right, I'm ready for a lock. Ready for that retainer? Yep. There you go. All right, I'm slide this on. It won't quite go. It's close. Well, I'll tell you what. It's offset three and a half degrees, just like a box end wrench. So why don't you flip it over and put it on the other side? See if it'll right. fit that way. All you gotta do is simply flip it over. That's it. it fell right on. Perfect. All right. Now I need the retaining ring. Here's your clip. And an easy way to put those on is with a pair of needle nose pliers because you can put one side right into the center of that double hex head and the other side on the clip. That's how it goes. I like the sound of that. Snapped right in there. Yeah. Perfect. All right, two more, and we're, we got this baby wrapped up. All right, let's do it. Now this one has to be, it's gonna, it's gonna stop on the bottom of the tube, right? Yep. All right, flip it over, see if it goes that way. Oh, easy. I like that flip over part. There you go. Put the clip in the groove. <laughs> you look like you've done this before. <laughs> well, you know what, Robert? I should have done this in the first place. Well, I was never going to tell you that, Tom. <laughs> it'd been a lot easier doing this once One instead more? of twice. Yeah, there we go. But I'll tell you what, you will not have to change this gasket again. These cannot rotate now. And one more clip and we got this. They are pretty easy to put on with these snap ring pliers. Or needle nose. Look at that. There you go. I guess we're ready to fire this thing up and see what it sounds like. Kathy, hit the key. Let's hear it. Much better. Well, Robert, that thing sounds a lot better, and it's going to stay that way thanks to Stage 8 locking fasteners. And did you tell me you got some new news coming up? We have some very incredible news coming up. We're going to announce right about the start of race season involving some of the highest quality header manufacturers out there and of course stage eight locking header bolts. Wow, can't wait to hear that. But right now we gotta take a break. We'll be back with more Performance TV right after this. This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by ZMAX, tested trusted performance. Race gas, get more out of your engine. Redline Loomtronics, home of the classic car halo headlight. And by Total Automotive, OEM parts specialist. Welcome back to Performance TV. As you may have noticed by now, yeah, we, we like our Camaros around here of all different years. We've done a lot of things to them, both mechanically, suspension, outside, and aesthetically on the inside. You may remember here a few episodes ago, we had a 2011 Camaro that we did some really nice upgrades on the interior. And just to remind you of what the install looked like of putting the console in, take a look. That stuff looks good, Kathy. Hand it to me, let's put it in. All right. That should be pretty easy to install because the other stuff come out real easy. And this is, is a direct replacement, so it should fit right out of the way. Emergency brake, there you go. Get my wires up out of here. And go up in that hole. Yeah. Right there. Oh, right down in there. Yeah. All right, Perfect. since you took her trim piece back on right there. There we go. Slide it down in there. Hook my wires back up. Right. There. It's gonna pop right into that slot. There, just like that. Pops right back into place. Okay. All right, now we need to put the back piece on here. That's awful good looking. Yeah, I got a screw. There you go. All right. There you go. Now let's put the cover on. Pull it back up. Pull this back up. You hold that there, and I'll get the screws. Okay. It really does make a big difference in here. That's right. Looks more like an SS model than an LS model, you know it? You know, Tommy, you did a really nice job, as usual, on the install of the console with the Redline Goods leather upgrade. Yeah, but we had a few questions from some viewers that said, do I have to buy a new console? Do I have to take mine out and send it in to get that put on it? Right. Now we're going to clear that up for them. The Redline Goods kit comes a complete leather kit. 
Yes, with, with all different kinds. Now, we still have the one here that's, that looks like the one that we put in the, the Camaro. But man, Tommy, you could, you could do all black, which I know you would probably blend the blacked out stuff. You could do so many different things, and it's just real easy to install. Right. Now, it comes the leather. It's all preformed. It's easy to install yourself. comes with the glue. There's online videos to show you how to do it. It's good instructions on them online. But you take your existing console, take it out of your car, and you just put this leather on top of your own console. You glue it on nice and easy. You don't have to be a skilled person at doing upholstery in a car. Right. You can do it yourself because they prefab all the pieces to fit all your consoles. So you can pick out which vehicle you are you want, you know, which car you have and, and what colors you want, your stitching you want. It comes to you. All you gotta do is put it on. It's pretty easy. I mean, the piece like this comes for the little for the little armrest here. Right. You put it over there. You tuck the corners, you yep. glue it. After we have our little spray glue on there. You let it dry and reinstall it. Absolutely. Now, as you mentioned about the, the stitching, and you can tell here from just our two different pieces, I mean, you can do the contrasting stitching, you can have it match. They have so many different colors to choose from and different types of stitches, <laughs> like we even see here on the shifter knob. The leather, I gotta mention it again, it's that nice buttery leather. It's Italian leather, and not only the consoles, as we mentioned before, you can do the headrest, you can do the dash, you can do the, the door panels. There are so many different things to choose from and to really make the inside of your vehicle personalized and your own. And like, you know, I mean, the way these things come to start with, it's just all plain plastic. <laughs> yeah, all the new cars these days, all plastic, vinyl, not very good looking. Right. This is gonna give it a quality look. We saw in the video after we were done, the car looked outstanding on the inside and super easy to install. Anybody can do this, and you can do it in your garage. You don't have to tear the thing clear apart. You just pull the console out, put the stuff on, put it back in. You know, a few hours, you're ready to go again. Absolutely. It, it definitely changed the interior look of the Camaro that we had here a few episodes ago. And if you want to find out more about how you can, you know, really personalize the inside of your vehicle, Tommy, tell them where they can go do that. You can go to redlinegoods.com. And you know what? I'm telling you, we also got to get on out of here. So thanks for joining us this week. We'll have more next time around here on Performance TV.